this is Alma and welcome to my book journey. I'm here with my reading vlog for reading the very first Harry Potter book, Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. I have seen all the movies, but I've never read one of the books or any of the books. And so I decided that I was going to read the first book this month to go alongside with the Back to Hog Hogwarts, I always say that wrong, Back to Hogwarts um, readathon for September. And so I wanted to, re you know, vlog my experience reading this for the first time. And so I forgot to record my intro <laughs> video before I started. So I'm recording it now. And then I will start, um, put in how I went about reading the book. And then I'll come back and tell you my final thoughts. So here we go. Good morning. So I just finished my morning workout, so I'm a little bit tired, but I wanted to talk about, um, I just started reading the Harry Potter and the Sorcery Stone, the first book by JK Rowling. And I read the first chapter and I couldn't believe there was things in here that I never knew, <laughs> or at least I don't remember. Cause I, this, as some of you may know, this is my first time reading um, the Harry Potter books. I have seen all the movies in the past. And I, one of the, one of the funny things when I'm reading, was reading this first chapter was, I never knew how Harry Potter was related to the family that was uh, taking care of him. And I knew that were, you know, his family, but I didn't know how they were connected. And so in the first chapter, we learned that his mother is the sister of the, um, the awful woman. <laughs> Oh my goodness, what is her, what are their last names? I've already forgotten. I'm so terrible with names. Let's see, what are their names? Their names are the Dursleys. And I do remember these, this, this couple from the movies and they really portrayed them terrible in the movies. So we'll see. And from the first chapter, they sound like they did a pretty good job. I'm talking about the son Dudley. And I do remember Dudley and how he's a, a brat. <laughs> and I love... I love that in this chapter, the mother tells the husband that Dudley learned a new name and uh, Dudley learned a new word because he's, you know, young and his new word was won't. <laughs> it's like, of course, of course. Um, but I was surprised in the first chapter how everything, I mean, it just kicks right off with um, Voldemort, 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 <laughs> and that he's gone and that... Um, of course, the first chapter is called The Boy Who Lived because uh, Voldemort attacked Harry Potter's parents and killed them and the little boy and the baby lived. And then we also meet um, the Dumbledore and, oh gosh, what is her name? I could pick, and as I'm, I have to tell you, as I'm reading the book, I am just picturing in my mind the 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 actors that portrayed <laughs> that were in the movie of course so i'm picturing those actors and so the the oh the cat there was a cat in the beginning and then it turns out to be the professor and i believe it's the professor that's in the in the movies that always wears the black witch hat i don't they didn't describe the witch hat in the first chapter. So I'm wondering, did she ever, I'll have to, as I go through, I'll have to see, did she ever wear the witch hat or is that just a thing that they did in the movie? But anyway, she was there and then uh, Hagrid came and this was cool uh, as I should have had my book up as you know, they were talking about, you know, the thing, the event that happened and the, the, you know, everybody was, excited because this bad guy has been there's the first time we see Dumbledore um and then but there she is Professor uh, McGonagall and I'm, I'm I'm making notes <laughs> is she's the cat uh McCon I'll have to I'm terrible with pronouncing names but her anyway so she um 
they are the they're all excited because I think this person is somebody that comes in later, right? I, I recognize his name. And then oh, and the owls everywhere. That was cool. And there's Voldemort. And they don't say the one who shall not be named. I think that's what they did in the movies. Now here she says, you know who. She says, you know who. <laughs> and then um, Bold, uh, Dumbledore, he says his name, but then she says, well, you can say his name. Oh, you can say his name because uh, Voldemort was afraid of you. Um, okay, and then, so what was I getting at? Oh, so um, they're gonna bring Harry Potter to the family and she is like why are you leaving him with this family because oh this part is funny she's like I saw because she the cat was had been watching this family for a while and she's like I saw him kicking his mother all the way up the street screaming for sweets and she's like how can you have Harry Potter live with these people and yeah because he was a total brat and then we hear uh, this person's name, Hagrid, and I know who Hagrid is. And so he's saying he's going to bring, he's bringing the baby. And so he's bringing the baby. They're waiting for him. And he's on his motorcycle. And my grandkids, my daughter and her and the, the grandkids went to Universal Studios this uh, in the July, I think. And they got on this, well, that was one of their favorite rides at the park was the Hagrid's motorcycle ride. But actually, it wasn't Hagrid's motorcycle. It was Sirius Black. He let him borrow it. And then later on, it says he's going to give it, take it back to him. So, and I know who Sirius Black is from the, TV, from the movies. It's curious that they say young Sirius Black. Hmm. Because in the movies, he wasn't very young. But of course, oh, that's right. This is in the past. That's right, because he's a baby. That's right. That makes sense now. Duh. Takes me a while. But right, right. So at this period of time, uh, Harry Potter is a baby. So Sirius Black would be younger. So that that makes sense now. Okay. It takes me a while, but uh, it'll it'll come to me. Okay. So what else? Uh, they talked about the, his little thing on his forehead, his bolt of lightning, and then Dumbledore says he's going to have that forever. And she, I, I really like the part about. Like I said, she didn't want him there. Like, why are you leaving this baby? And I and I thought that too. Why did Dumbledore leave this Harry Potter at these terrible people's house? Because they were awful. But he talks about that because of what um, has happened. You know, Voldemort was so terrible, and he's gone. And like, like Harry Potter, this child is going to be famous. And everybody's going to know him. Everybody's going to want to be around. You know, he's going to be bombarded with fame. And I guess he thought that it was better that Harry grew up away from that. Um, uh, distance from that. At least that's what he told her. And I was telling my son, because I was telling him, I was like, hey, I finally started the Harry Potter books. And I go, I go, you know, he said he put him there, left him there because he was wanting to protect him. And I guess didn't want him to grow up in the in the shroud you know the shroud of, of what he'll what happened to him and my son goes are you sure because Dumbledore didn't always say the <laughs> at least from the movies right he didn't so I'm like oh maybe not but anyway so we'll see of course this is just barely chapter one but I was very surprised that at how many things uh were revealed in this very first chapter and also this is something I never I guess I don't remember or I don't remember ever knowing or remembering that I always thought did uh, the people that he lived with did they know he had powers and I was trying to remember from the movies did they know he had was you know his fam mom and dad were like whatever they were and he just the Mrs. Mr. Dudley on his way to work mentioned uh, what he says uh, it, when he says her crowd, he's talking about the sister, like her crowd. So he knows there's something about the people um, that the sister and the husband, and they have no relationship at this point in time. They they know who they know they have a child named Harry, or actually he could even <laughs> they know they have a child named Harry, but they don't have any relationship with them because they're different in some way. But and that's as far as. It was in the thing. And then poor Harry, um, Dumbledore leaves him on the, <laughs> I told my son, I go, he just left him on the porch. 
Um, let's see. That's the very end part of it. Um, and it's in the middle of the night. And he leaves him on the porch. And it says that he, the baby was there for a few hours on the porch until the lady came and opened the door to get the milk bottle. So that's kind of sad. They left the poor baby with a note, with a letter, you know, explaining everything, I guess. And so that was chapter one. Here's my cute little bookmark that I have in here. So I think this is going to be fun because I, I can see myself. It's going to take me a while, maybe, because I, it's like I want to analyze everything. Just kind of like comparing it to the movie. And I, I couldn't remember because it's been a long time, especially since I've seen the first movie, if they ever showed us this. And I was asking my son, I go, was this in the movie that they left him on the porch? Because for some reason, I'm thinking that the movie started where he was already, you know, you know, older, a kid. And I go, and if maybe if they did show it, was it a flashback in one of the movies? I don't know. I don't remember. <laughs> so anyway, I am enjoying my start of the, my, um, of the read. And I'll come back a little bit later after I've read some more. Obviously, I need to get more in here. But I, like I said, it was just surprising that so much just happened right in that first chapter. Like, they gave you so much. Okay, we'll see you in a little bit. Good morning. It is Friday, and I'm back with another little um, update on how I'm going with my Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, <laughs> Sorcerer's Stone uh, first time reading. And so I'm behind because I am actually buddy reading this with Lucy, uh, Lucy, the Lucy Chronicles and Christy A. Cole, Christy A. Cole, and uh, they are both rereading it, of course. But this is, like I said, this is the first time I'm reading it and I'm, I am behind. Uh, they already are like on chapter six and I just got to, let's see, where am I at now? Chapter five, I think. And so I am hoping to get a lot more read today, and it's been really good. I have, like I said, in the first part, in that first chapter, so many things were revealed. And so I had questions because it's been a long time since I've seen the first film. So there were things that I, I couldn't exactly remember happened. And so now, like I said, I'm on chapter, let me verify here. Sorry, it's hard, kind of hard to do with my one-handed phone i am on chapter five and so what i have what what something um a question that i had that i couldn't remember from the film was did his aunt and uncle know about the that he what he was or what he could do or whatever and in these chapters and of course in these chapters, we read yes, they absolutely, they absolutely knew. Um, they knew that his the um, his mom and dad were uh, those sort of people that like they say, and they knew what his background was and everything. And they pretty much kept it from him. Of course, they didn't want him to know. And one thing it is it is it is kind of funny reading it, but then it's kind of sad too the way they treated poor Harry. I mean, they just really treated him really bad uh it, it was funny let's see because i i tried to underline a lot of things as um we find out you know he's been living under the cupboard underneath the stairs and his little bed and and then come to find out dudley has a second bedroom <laughs> that he could have been sleeping in the whole time isn't that crazy um and that's because in this chapter the letters start coming and they keep those letters away from him. And that was hilarious. So all of a sudden he's, um, he's 10 years old and all of a sudden these letters start arriving with his name and they're, and they're addressed like to Harry, um, under the cupboard. Let's see, let's see, is this one it? Yeah. <laughs> the cupboard under the stairs because that's where he lives under the, under the stairs and his aunt and uncle are like freaking out because like how do they know that he lives <laughs> that we keep him under the the cupboard or under the stairs and so they keep you know their, that whole chapter is him them keeping the letters away from him and they keep coming every day more and more letters and, and then the next one the and then they notice you know since he's in the second bedroom now the letter, the next letter comes, let's see, 
address to that, I believe, was that, um, yeah, it, it keeps going. And then finally, the uh, aunt and uncle drag him out of the house. They drive him all over because they were like running away from it. And then they find themselves on a little island, pretty much out in the, <laughs> in the water. And um, let's see, where's that letter at? Uh, did the letter come before he knocked on the door? He, oh, he even got one with it because they, they were staying at a hotel. <laughs> and, and they said, it was funny because the lady that worked there said, we've got hundreds of, hundred of these at the front desk. You know, hey, can you, you, you want to take them? And then that's when they leave, too. He finds, like, hopefully trying to find a secluded place um, out in the booties somewhere. And he gets the next letter. And, uh, okay, anyway. But anyway, so they get the next, um, they're out there in the booties. And, of course, somebody does show up, too to find them and it is Hagrid of course and Hagrid is there knocking on the door and he's telling he begins to tell Harry who Harry is and about his parents and that I thought I was like oh we're getting it all right now so he tells him at first he's shocked that the aunt and uncle have kept that from him because evidently Dumbledore remember and when he left the baby he was one years old uh, on the doorstep, he had left a letter, and evidently he had written the aunt and uncle the circumstances of Harry Potter. And, I'm, yeah, I'm sure they read it, but they never gave that information to Harry. So he was clueless about who he was, and Hagrid gave him kind of like a short and sweet tale about Voldemort. Voldemort? 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 Gosh, I can't say his name. About how he killed the parents and that he tried to kill him and he couldn't and how now he is fa um everybody knows the story about harry and then he gives him the letter finally goes hey you know he's been, the letter that he has been hasn't had is the letter that he gets saying that he has been um uh, accepted here's the letter accepted to hogwarts and that he needs to to the, and the term begins on September 1st, and that is, and this is on his birthday. I do remember that. It's, he was counting down the minutes to his birthday. Uh, he was going to be 11. And so he, he received this, this, all this message and everything. And then he finds out what muggles are because Hagrid calls his, his aunt and uncle muggles. And this was important and interesting to me because it says, he asked him, what is a muggle? And he, and he says it is, it is what we call non-magic folk. So, and maybe they'll get more into that, into the book, or I don't know if in this book or the others, how does one become a wizard? Because obviously that was something that was interesting also in the, in one of the chap first few chapters, the aunt, his aunt was talking about the sister, her sister, and that her parents fully knew that she was had uh, became a witch or not became a witch but she was a witch because she her sister actually went to Hogwarts and that they were proud of her and it was always um what was the mom's name it was um Lily oh Lily this and Lily that and you could tell that the sister or her his aunt was jealous of Harry Potter's mother so that was probably the start of all the animosity. Maybe she was jealous that her sister had abilities and was able to go to Hogwarts and she was a non, what they called a non-magic person. So how, how does one become a magic person if they're born into a non-magic family, which is what Harry Potter's mother evidently was. It didn't say anything about her parents being magic, at least not in that chapter. But the sister obviously was not. So that'll be interesting to find out if they explain that in the books, how that happens. And so I got up to the part where he, like, he receives his letter and an invitation. And then the his aunt and uncle are still saying, no, he's not going to go. They're trying to keep him away from that life. 
So it is, it is, I, I am really enjoying it so far. And it, it's, um, and I was telling my husband, as I'm reading the book, I am picturing the actors from the movie, you know, because I, yeah, I can't help doing that, but I'm doing that. And so, which is fun. And so, but it's, it's really fast. I mean, things are like this, da, 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 da. it's, it's happening really fast. So I've been thinking today's Friday, I have a lot of errand, I have some errands to run and things. And then I hope to get quite a bit further in it, in this. And then hopefully maybe on Saturday, I can finish this off. Um, because I, I think once we get into the school, more things are going to happen and more characters, of course, are going to come in. And so this is really, it's been really fun so far. So I'm going to, like I said, I have a lot of errands to do and I, I may take you along with me on a couple of those. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. All right. So I just finished uh, chapter five and it was when Hagrid takes him shopping to look for his, uh, get the stuff off his list. And then also to the, oh, first to the bank to get his money out <laughs> that he didn't know he had. But I, one thing uh, before, that I thought was kind of cool, let's see, because I underlined it, was his list of books. And I recognize one of the names, only from movies, not from books. Um, it said, one of the course books was Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. And it said it was written by Newt Scamander. And I know that's um, from the movies that came afterward. And I think that's what the, the name was of the movie was Fantastic Be Beast and Newt was Scamander. I think he was the main character. I'll have to look that up, but I'm pretty sure that's it because that name popped up, popped up right to me. So, so that was kind of cool. And I think um, they didn't say his name, but when he was trying on his robe and getting altered, he was talking to another kid and that kid kind of sounded stuffy and he was talking about how muggles um uh, it should only be uh, old wizarding families and i'm like that has to be the bad guy <laughs> um i think his name is malfoy but they didn't say his name but i'm sure that was who he was talking to so all right it's going good so far So I just uh, finished reading chapter 12 in the book and I'm real close. I'm surprised this uh, book only has 17 chapters. And so a couple things that, uh, let's see, I have to go back. So met, a, you know, a few people, some characters that I recognize, that I remember from the movie. Um, the little mouse, or no, not the mouse, the rat, <laughs> Scabbers, that uh, is, belongs to Ron. I do find it interesting that at the beginning, both boys really don't like Herm Hermione. They think she's bossy and, you know, no, this is no, this is no, little Miss Know at all. And I did like that one part in the book where she, they were in Snape's class and she kept raising her hand and he just ignored her. And cause she was, you know, and he's like, just, just stop already. But she, you know, cause she is very studious and she's been studying. And so she knows all these answers that, um, that the Snape was asking Potter in the very beginning. Like, I think it was like their first class and he wanted to make a point, you know, a point to embarrass him probably. And he, uh, Harry really feels like Snape hates him. Um, so that is something that is gonna play on in the rest of the books. Um, I really like Hagrid's character, how he's befriended him. And then I remembered, well, yeah, he's known him since he was a baby. And in the beginning, when he, he even kissed Harry uh, he, he was one years old, I guess, when he dropped, when they left him at the, the Dursleys. But he, he already had an affection for him, and he is, uh, you know, checking up on him at the school. And he even sends him like a Christmas gift, which was really sweet. So, 
he, he spent his first Christmas there and it's the best Christmas he's ever had in his life because with his aunt and uncle, they mistreated him so badly that he finally feels like at home and just having a good time with the meals. And I do like that when they talk about eating there that all of a sudden just the food just magically appears on their plates. And it's like tons and tons of food that, the, the, that Harry, you know, just loves. Um, so, um, they know that something has been stolen from the bank, uh, the only bank that the wizarding people use, and it's run by not, oh, is it? It's run by, oh, I can't remember. I want to say goblins. I don't think it's goblins. But um, anyway, something was stolen and Harry puts it together that it was stolen the day on his birthday in July 31st. And that was the same day he went to get his money out. And also the same day that Hagrid took something from a vault that uh, Dumbledore sent him to get retrieve. And it was just like a box, a real small box that was in this big vault. And so Harry realizes that whatever the people were trying to rob what it, or steal from the vault was that because it, they mentioned that what they wanted had already been taken out. And so he, they, they find out that there's a dog with three heads that is guarding, that they, they think, or Harry thinks that there's a guard, that a dog with three heads that is guarding this thing that whatever was taken from the vault. And then in the chapters I was just reading, um, the dog is named Fluffy. Yeah, Fluffy. <laughs> and um, and then they think Snape is trying to steal whatever it is. The dog is, is dog, the dogs, the dog with three heads is, is Fluffy, is, uh, is guarding because he was bitten by the dog or something like that. And so he's trying to figure everything out. The chapter I just read finished, so I'm on uh, the chapter 12 that I just read, talked about, um, and I do remember this from the movie a little bit. Like I said, it's been a long time since I've seen the first movie. And so I re he found him, he's, oh, before that, he, for Christmas, he gets, and that was sweet because he never used to get presents from anybody, but he got a present from Hagrid, sent him a gift, and then, um, the Weasleys, the mother, knitted him a sweater. And because he always, as Ron says, every every Christmas, mom knits us these ugly, <laughs> ugly sweaters. So he had one. So that was sweet that they included him. And then he got, a, he got a gift that wasn't signed. It didn't say who it was from, but it was an invisibility cloak was, where he puts it on and then he, and he's invisible. And the note said that this cloak was actually, uh, Harry's father's cloak and he had been keeping it and now it was time to give it to him, but yet it wasn't, uh, it wasn't signed. So he doesn't know who gave it to him. Well, anyway, he put that cloak on because they're trying to find out, you know, the mystery and he run, he finds a mirror. And when he looks into the mirror, he sees his mom and dad and other people behind him that he figures out are like his re relatives. And he keeps wanting to go back to see, um, look at the mirror so he can see his parents and then when Ron he takes Ron down there and when Ron looks in the mirror he sees he doesn't see his family because he sees himself older and accomplished and like the captain and later on in the chapter when Harry goes down there again to see the look in the mirror Dumbledore's there and he talks to him and he's and he and he basically says that this mirror shows you not what you what your like your desire heart's desire to to be happy and for for harry potter it's to see his family and to have a family and to know his family and for for ron it was him alone as a being accomplished because he's always because he has so many brothers and they're all they are a lot of them are accomplished or he and he doesn't feel like he is you know, he's just another brother and he wanted to see himself set apart. 
And that's what Dumbledore said when he saw himself, that his desire was that. So I think, I'm trying to think, I'm going to guess that Dumbledore is the one that sent him the cloak. I don't know. I don't remember. I don't remember from the movie if, if he ever finds out or not, but I'm, I'm going to get, I'm guessing it's from him. Um, maybe. And uh, what else is going on? Oh, um, there was a troll in that somehow got into the castle and was at one point was after Hermione, Hermione and the boys came in and rescued her and then she, um, when they all got caught, she defended them and after that they became friends. So at first she was, which surprised me because I thought I was just remembering that they were had always been friends all three of them but they really you know they they really weren't friends with her because they thought she was a uh, know-it-all and bossy and and uh there was one sad part when they said something about her not having friends and nobody liked her and she heard that and that and she started crying but after she helped them and um they realized you know that she was uh she was uh worth having as a friend so now now they're friends, all three of them. So I did want to say that today on, on one of the stations uh, on TV, they were having, guess what, a Harry Potter marathon. So when I turned it on, I was like, oh, it's Harry Potter's on, but it was the second movie, A Chamber of Secrets, and it was at the very end. So I was like, oh, darn, I wish it was, but I wish I would have seen the first one, but of course I didn't know it was on because I was just going through flipping through stations and then so I watched the third movie and that has always been my favorite of all the movies I love I love that one so watch that and then there were some things in there like oh yeah this kind of they talk about it in, in this book so so far it's going really good like I said I'm, I'm on chapter 13 I'm hoping to finish this tomorrow and let y'all know what I think so we'll see it and we'll see you later. So I'm going to try to read another couple chapters in the book. I wasn't going to, but uh, my friend Lucy has a live tonight that she's doing with her friend. Uh, let's see, who is she with doing it with today? Whit Whitney, I think is her name. Whitney is, I think, is her name. So I'm going to just hang out a little bit in this live um, spread, <laughs> this live spread tonight, and just see if I can read a couple more chapters in this. And if it gets going really good, I might finish this. I know I'm, I'm being bad because I'm supposed to be buddy reading <laughs> with this Lucy and Christy. Um, but they've already read it, so they're rereading it. But I wanted... I'm like, I'm on a roll and I want to get to the end. And then I'm thinking about, because I do have the second book. So if it, you know, if I get this done way ahead of, at the beginning of the month, then I could possibly try to read another Harry Potter book for the readathon, which would be cool. So, I, like I said, I wasn't going to read anymore tonight, but then I saw that my next chapter is on Nicholas. Flamel, and so he's like the mystery character that they they want to find out about. So if the whole chapter is about him, I definitely want to read it tonight. So, and then like I said, I saw Lucy had a live, a sprint tonight, and I always have fun talking to Lucy or chatting with her on her lives. So I'll be doing that. Okay, this is super funny. So I said I was reading, I wanted to read this chapter because it was on this mysterious character that they didn't know about named Nicholas, um, Nicholas, la la la, what is this guy's name? I already forgot. Nicholas Flamel. And so, <laughs> and Harry was saying, you know, I recognize that name from somewhere. And, um, he, in this chapter that I'm reading, he, he got another, I guess they have these like these uh, chocolate frogs, chocolate frogs. And in the, in each package, they get like a 
like a almost like a baseball card but instead of baseball or sports characters they're like famous wizards and in the very beginning of the book when he was on his way to hogwarts on the train he opened one up and he got dumbledore's card and 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 then so this at this point in the book he opens another one of these frog chocolate frogs and he gets a card and then he's like, oh, <clears throat> I got Dumbledore again. But then when he looked at it, <gasps> he's like, that's where I saw it. And then it's so funny because <laughs> even in, because on the in, the in the book, it has, you know, what was on the card for Dumbledore. And the, the two things that I underlined, and I remembered it now, were, were that <clears throat> it talks about Dumbledore and it says he is particularly famous for his defeat of the dark wizard, Grindelwald in 1945 and that is now I did see that movie and that's also the Fantastic Beasts, Beasts movie and I've seen both of them yeah I've seen both of them and that was his fighting with Grindelwald Grindel, Grindelwald I think the first movie he was played by oh my goodness what is his name I totally I'm, I'm drawing a blank he was on Pirates of the Caribbean. Anyway, so it says that about Dumbledore, but then it also says, and his <clears throat> he's famous for that, for that defeat. And then he's also famous for the discovery of the 12 uses of dragon's blood and his work on alchemy with his partner, Nicholas Flamel. And I even, <laughs> that's not good I remember. I even underlined it and I put a question mark saying, who is, who is Nicholas Flamel? And it, totally didn't dawn on me that's who they're looking for so i think that's pretty funny but i'm like i'm like harry potter he's like oh i remember that from the card so i just wanted to talk about that so guess I what when I'd be seeing you, Mr. i found a harry potter marathon going on on this channel and I am really Seems only surprised how close it is to the book so far. First He's getting his first wand. Okay, so I am done with reading the book. And so it's funny because, um, was it yesterday? Yeah, yesterday, um, one of the TV shows, I, sh I put the video in here where I found that they were having a Harry Potter marathon. And so I came, when I turned the TV on, it was um, playing, I think, the end of the second movie. And then I watched the third movie, because that's my favorite. And then um, later on in the evening, I came back and came back to that channel. And I thought, you know, it'd be like the later movies. But then for whatever reason, I don't know why they had started it all over again and they were playing the first movie and so I said well I want to watch that because you know I was I hadn't finished reading the book yet but I was really far I mean I think I only had a couple chapters to go and so I read started watching and it, I could I didn't watch it from the beginning but when I came in it was before he had gone over to gone to Hogwarts so it was I missed the, the first part of the book our first part of the movie but I was um surprised I was like oh yeah because it had been a long time since I'd seen that first movie and so I was like oh yeah they do a lot from the book I mean it wasn't like of course it wasn't exactly like the book but it was pretty close I would say it was pretty close and so what did I think about the book on a whole I I did enjoy it it was an easy fast reading and you forget that this was a it's a middle grade book and so it is, it, even though it has, I think, gone on to appeal to adults <laughs> more than, than children, that, that's for sure. And so it is a middle grade book and it reads like a middle grade book. But it, the, the story, since I had read, I mean, not read, since I had seen the movies many years ago, I knew the overall story. I knew the story of Harry, of his uh, life learning that he was a wizard when he didn't know anything about it and then going to the school and I knew you know pretty much how the, the story is going to end as far as the movies anyway we'll see but anyway um so it wasn't like I was 
it was like I was re it almost like it was like I was rereading a book I had read before because I knew the story and so but it was but it was good in a way because I saw things things popped out at me that I knew and I thought well I wonder what it would have been as a like a to come in brand new to this book and not have seen the movies I mean would I have seen these things and probably not because I'm I'm not usually good at, at picking out the clues and things and so you know I saw those things in here which was kind of was was neat to see is like oh I know because so right away I knew at the beginning of the book who the bad guy was so I was like yeah because I remembered him from the from the movie but surprisingly he was not in the book very much I mean every once in a while they would show him or you'd read about him but he wasn't a major character um of course the main character were were Harry and his his friends and them just um, learning how to be in this school, right? Because they were all new, first years, from different backgrounds where we have Weasley that all his family were, um, all his family were, had been to the school already. And so he was not, he was, he didn't know everything firsthand. And of course his brothers had told him things that weren't true just to scare him but he had an understanding and he knew about magic and and everything and then we had Hermione that comes from oh and I don't know if they mention it I'm I know it just from the movies but now that I'm thinking did they mention they must have mentioned that her oh yes she did she did mention it because she said her parents were dentists I do remember that that they were dentists they weren't wizards so both her parents were not um were what they call muggles and and then court but she knew who she when she got her letter and they were happy about sending her she did all her studying everything ahead of time so she knew that she was book smart as far as um her her being a wizard or, or a witch or whatever which I don't really like that they use witch. That was one thing I was thinking about. I was like, if they would have, if they would have had different names <laughs> for what they were, I don't know. Um, so let's see. And so, and then Harry, of course, was um, new to everything because he didn't know anything about his his past and who he really was, and and that was interesting. But you know, in the book, he really was. He was strong. He really was strong already. And it was probably because of his upbringing. I mean, he was so bullied by his um, uh, family, not only the the boy Dudley, he was bullied by his um, aunt and uncle, who were horrible. And I think it's like the, the hatred that the mother or his aunt had for his mother just passed on to him. And she just couldn't see past that. She still had her, her, her jealousy for her sister, that it just turned into hatred towards him. So, and that was, you know, at the beginning of the book, we saw that. And then, of course, he goes to Hogwarts, and he, he has to um, fit in somehow. But he's in the, he is famous, and then he has to get used to that. And, and expectations of him and uh, but he is brave because he stands up to Malfoy uh, Draco he stands up to Draco right away and so and he is he isn't afraid to go and you know go and do the things that he's doing even though Ron is like why are you doing that you know don't and Hermione are trying to trying to stop him from doing stuff, and he's like, "No, I'm I'm going to do this because this um, Voldemort killed my parents, and you know." So he never was afraid. It didn't seem like he was a fearful at all. Um, he really wasn't. He was he was he, and that's why he I think he was uh, put in the Gryffindor with the hat or the the Sorting Hat put him in Gryffindor because of his courage and bravery but he was um he was really brave and and wasn't shy about going and doing uh, following the clues and and using his friends to help him you know 
and they all and the, I loved the ending and of course at the beginning um, in my I will put I, I was gonna say that in the beginning but I'll put it in my in my um, in my description and everything that this is full spoilers <laughs> full spoilers full spoilers spoilers for this is that um, at the end when they go to get the stone they each do something to the spell there's like several spells cast there are several spells cast of my daughter and her friends are in the other room and I think they're singing I'm sorry apologize anyway so um they have spells that they have to break to get to the stone and each each one is able to break or beat the spell uh which was I really like that because they each played a part in it as you know they were a good they were a good team in other words so um like I said I don't I don't I guess I I am a new reader to the book even though I know the story so it's kind of different in that way uh what was I going to say I was going to say something so this book came out in 1997 that's how old this book is and I did it didn't occur to me so I was telling my friends that when this book came out my my oldest my daughter my oldest daughter at the time was six years old and my son was four and of course my youngest daughter you know she was not even born yet many years before she would come along so that's how um so that's why this book was never on my radar way back then my children were way too young to read this and I was um and then when they and then when they were um older um I was uh working and so I wasn't reading myself uh for reading fiction fiction books for fun you know I wasn't reading at all so and and I don't think either my kids saw the movies much later um and Ellie my youngest she she's seen bits and pieces of movies but they don't appeal to her she's like I'm not into Harry Potter so and I'm not sure if uh her generation this is too considered all you know because it is 90 97 if this is you know and I'm sure maybe there are children that read this nowadays and, and enjoy them but maybe they're more for that that 90s generation of of uh, adult <laughs> teenagers and kids that read this but anyway um it was really a, a quick read it was like I said I was really surprised it was only 17 chapters and it was bam 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 I mean they they but yet there was a lot in it talk excuse me it's talking about the history I mean the the world and I'm sure in the in the next books that is developed more and we get to hear more about what was really going on Dumbledore was wasn't in this at all that much either but he but he his scenes were pivotal because he and I and I guessed right I had guessed that he was the one that sent him the cloak and it was him that sent him the cloak and kind of and he even thought you know I, I think they were I don't know if they mentioned it or is it something I just thought that he kind of orchestrated he like put them into that and orchestrated Harry to do all the things that he did like it was a, a plan that Dumbledore had for him to to find out who was after the stone and and then we see um and I forgot I was telling so when I was watching the movie I hadn't finished it yet so I only got so far in the movie and I didn't want to finish it because I didn't want to because I I couldn't remember totally how it ended <laughs> so I was like I don't want to spoil it for myself and so I didn't I only watched so far in the mo in the movie and then I turned it off and then today when I finished this that that last chapter I was like oh yeah I do remember <laughs> I do remember how uh how that ended and I'm trying to think oh I wonder I don't remember how it looked in the movie um with the bad guy uh my favorite uh favorite characters in this book I I really liked Hagrid because <laughs> Hagrid my goodness he he took a liking to um Harry right away 
and he because probably because he kind of bonded with him in the very beginning because he's the one that took him as a child and 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 then he even kissed him, kissed him goodbye when he left him with the with with his family there the aunt and uncle and then all through the school he kept tabs on him and he even sent him that note like come and see me i want to hear how you did it you know at school and he befriended him and he sent him a christmas present and he gave him the, a birthday gift he gave him the, he gave him out he gave him the owl um uh, hedwig um he gave him that so he played a big part in um harry's first year a really big part he was a, i would say that after the three kids characters hagrid was next in the story because of everything that was going on with um there was like a side thing with with the dragon that harry realized oh you know and I, and i love that about the book that harry you know that he was thinking oh this happened you know this is why this happened and why didn't i see that you know he he was like putting the puzzles pieces of the puzzle together to figure out the the mystery and so yeah so this um it is fan you know it is has a fantasy but I'll, there's always i think in every if i remember right in every one of them the movies and maybe and so the books there's always a mystery to be solved and to find out and there's always clues that are left that they have to put together so that's what i, I enjoyed about this the clues that they had to put together and then so this book the first book was him at the school learning all the things the rules and and how to get along with the teachers and the the schoolwork that he had to do so yeah, I mean, for for only seventeen chapters, there was a lot of stuff that was in here, you know, because you have the first part was his story with being at home, and then we have the whole school, and then it's the friendships that he's developing, and then also the the people, and then you have the all the ghosts that are around floating around, and then the 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 caretaker that has the the. <laughs> that has the cat and then them sneaking around and let's see i mean there's so much that happened in this book and but it went it it goes by so quickly quickly and and so i'm trying to think if i remember everything that kind of stood out to me and uh I know there was there was one thing that was different in the in the book from the movie is that uh, I just because it was different I think I don't think the movie had this but they his his aunt and uncle actually dropped him off at the at the train station and they just left him there where in, in the movie it was it was Hagrid that took him and then at the end of the book they were actually there to pick him up which surprises me that they would even bother to go pick him up but they picked him up and then right away Harry goes now that I know magic <laughs> he's gonna he's gonna have some fun with Dudley during the summer which is like uh oh he's gonna get in trouble but anyway so that is how it was with me reading the book um -da -da -da. I did a lot like I said I did a lot of underlining and things and as I was reading because it was things that were uh, um uh, things that were popping out to me that I remembered and so that's it I'm done with my first well this is my second <laughs> done with my second book for the readathon and this one of course counts uh, count, counts for the first for the first prompt which was um, taking place in a, a, a boarding school or found family and found fam he definitely found has a found family here because he never really had one um, with his aunt and uncle and now he has um a home and uh you know what was cool was every time they I, I guess it was every time they ate all of a sudden the food food would disappear and he just loved the eating and all the funny different candy and stuff the one thing the candy that was really disgusting was the one that even um Dumbledore said the first the first time he tried it it was the vomit flavor <laughs> 
it was the vomit flavor so yeah i would never try that candy again if i if if it was uh vomit flavored it kind of remind me reminded me of jelly bellies but i don't think jelly bellies is a vomit flavor but anyway so there it is thank you so much for um watching today and let me know in the comments um if you if you are like me and you've never read this book or if you've read this many 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 times and which one of the books is your favorite and and what and if you did read this in the comments let me know what how old you were if are you were you, did you read it when uh, they first came out or when you were in middle school yourself or a teenager or an adult let me know I'd, I'd, I'd really be interested to know you know when you um, found found the book and, and read it or if you're like me and you watch the movies first but and then also let me know if you're joining us for the readathon this month it would you know September just got started and we and I'm getting ready to start uh, my next couple books that hopefully I will enjoy as much as this one all right thank you so much you all have a blessed day bye bye